Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from... An inmate at New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press 1. To refuse charges, press 2. Thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Hey, what up, Zani? Yo, what's going on? I'm cool and I can't complain. You still coming up this weekend? You'll be able to get up there? Yeah, I'm going um, be coming up there. What you want to do? Make sure you ain't on Kyler's side. We're going to be on Kyler's side. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bet, bet. <laughs> To be completely honest with you, I'm conflicted. Growing up, me and my brother had a contentious relationship, to say the least. I can recognize growing up, we were polar opposites in some ways and completely the same in others. We had the same temper and snap judgment mentality, which led to a lot of conflict between us. I held a lot of resentment for him growing up. I think the distance that I put between us makes his incarceration more emotionally complicated for me. I wasted so much time holding animosity towards him that I feel guilty missing him now. Visit days are the most difficult days for me. It should be the happiest. After days or weeks or months without seeing him, I should be overwhelmed with joy, but I'm not. It's exhausting. But when visit day comes, I still always make it. Because what our brother's for, if not to have your back in the darkest of times. I got my shoes on right now. Um, I got my boots on, but I brought these shoes just in case because um, I don't know if they're gonna let me in with these shoes, so I always bring a backup. Um, you wanna know something? Hands got zippers on them, and he may not let me in. I might have to run back. What I might have to do is before I get to the prison, I might need to stop and get a pair of sweatpants. Because now that I look, these pants got metal zippers on the side, and it may make the machine go off. So I don't know. So I'm probably gonna have to stop at um, what's that store? I think it's up here and buy some sweatpants just just in case. I'm out here in front of the store who not paid me to mention a business on camera, so I'm not going to. Uh, so right now, what I have, y'all didn't see my jeans, like, you got the little zipper on them, or whatever the case may be. So I'm not sure if they're gonna let me in and stuff like that, so I'm just gonna go pick up a pair of sweatpants just to be proactive and do it. And like I said, these are the shoes that I got on right here. So I brought them other shoes just in case. If you never had to visit a loved one in prison, you may not know how strongly the dress code is enforced. If you wear anything that sets off the metal detectors, they won't let you in. For women, it's worse though. If you have a wire bra on, you have to take it off and stuff it in a big brown paper bag before they let you enter. They can refuse your visit if your jeans are too tight or if your skirt is above the knee. No bobby pins, no metal clips for wigs, no spaghetti straps, no v-neck shirts. Women can't even show their shoulders or toes at all. If you refuse, you run a chance of having your visits revoked indefinitely. As a man, I can only imagine how degrading these sexist tactics are. But it's all a part of their strategy to control the person incarcerated. After all, 
what better way to break a man than through his women and children? And if you brutalize his family enough during visits, they may just stop coming, and that abandonment can shatter him, which is undoubtedly exactly what they want. Alright, y'all, so here we go. This is Attica Correctional Facility. As we pull in. Every spot has a number, so right now it looks like I'm number 37. A lot of kids when they come here, um, they'll they'll say like, oh, like my daddy had a castle or something like that. Like I heard a lot of kids say that because of the because of how the towers and that's I don't know. It's sweet, but it's depression. It's, it's depressing at the same time. For no reason. When everything goes wrong, you see some bad. Like, God forbid, I break my brother out with my zipper. <laughs> and with this whole. I don't think I'll come up. I hope so. I have to take this camera. So, but in this guy's next. next are they stopping? They are stopping. Let me stop here. They'll pick me up. Okay, tell me why the f just said. <laughs> Y'all, like, I just want to, like, coming up here, they all just do it so backwards. It don't make no sense. <sighs> they trigger me. It seems like they intentionally do whatever they can to snatch the joy and enthusiasm away from you before you see your loved one. Today, one guard tried to deny my access to the prison because I had on the wrong type of mask. This may be minor to some, but moments like this are a trigger for me. On Father's Day one year, they refused to let me take my niece in to see her dad because I had on the wrong type of shoes. The same shoes they accepted the week before. To add insult to injury, when we left, they had a police checkpoint set up right outside the prison. Police grinned at each other as they ticketed dozens of family for the smallest infractions who were only trying to see their loved ones on Father's Day. Overall, my visit with my brother was good. After visits, I typically want to go home, process, decompress. However, this particular visit was on Halloween. My sister had a party planned for my nieces and nephews. And I had a couple of ideas about what I could do to bring my spirits back up. All right, y'all, so I'm sitting up here. I'm sneaking into my sister's house. I'm dressed up like Michael Myers. Yeah, I got the whole show, so I'm about to go in and about to scare some kids, y'all. Y'all ready? Y'all, all the kids, come in the front room. Come in the front room. Close your eyes. <laughs> Is all the kids in here? Uh oh. Open your eyes. Yeah. 
You didn't know it was me. Yeah, you Hi. What? Why he was in the bathroom? Yeah, I'm sure you was hiding in there. Behind sir. Tommy, you can't play like that. Oh, I can't play like that. No, I'm out of breath. Make sure they know. Oh yeah, the sunny, the sunny. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I should have recorded it on JPEG. But uh, we, I can send it. We can record it off a phone. Okay. Hey, Zani. Why would that ear stop you? Hold on, y'all go downstairs. Yeah, real quick. Uncle Zani on the phone now. So go downstairs real quick. Yeah. My house. Yeah, you probably didn't get my message. I said I was going to send you pictures and videos. What's going on, Zani? Yo, I ain't see you in a minute, bro. What's going on? No, it's funny. <laughs> I love this. Family, doing nothing but being present. I've allowed myself to create space between me and family, and I refuse to do it anymore. Family is the elixir that pushes me to keep going in life. Prison traumatizes families, but for us, the tragedy of losing Zani to Attica Correctional Facility put our family closer. I intentionally did not include my brother's charges in this video because I'm not going to allow what he did to overwrite who he is. If I had any words for my brother, it would be this. We know who we are, yet we know not what we may be. The best is yet to come for you. Be well, be safe, and stay strapped in. If you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe to the On Counter Time YouTube page and make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at On Kyler Time. Be well, be safe, and stay strapped in.